Hi guys, Korean movie recapped here. Before we start, warning. Spoilers ahead. Today, I'm going to recap a 2010 Korean thriller movie called I Saw the Devil. A young lady who is the daughter of an ex-chief of police is murdered in a particularly gruesome fashion by a serial killer. Unknown to that serial killer, that lady was recently engaged to a Korean secret agent. Can he escape his wrath? The story starts with Yo Yun, talking to her fiancé on the phone. Her fiancé is Soo Yun, an agent for the National Intelligence Service. He is so busy with his job that he can't be with her on her birthday that day. She is stranded at the side of the road because her car has broken down in the snow. Soo Yun tells her to lock herself in the car until the tow truck comes. She is approached by a suspicious stranger parked nearby, asking if she needs help. She follows Soo Yun's instructions and declines the stranger's offer. After a while, she notices that the stranger's car hasn't moved away. Suddenly, the stranger busts the car's window with a hammer and attacks her, making her unconscious. In the stranger's hideout, she is tortured quite brutally. She begs him to spare her life because she is pregnant. But he kills her anyway. Her engagement ring falls into the drainage when the killer dismembers her body. A few days later, an ear is found in a plastic bag by a group of kids playing near a river. The police send a team to comb the scene and find Yo Yun's head in the river. Her father, who is an ex-chief of police, is devastated by it. Su Yun arrives at the scene and witnesses his fiancé's decapitated head. At the funeral, they both can't hold their grief. Su Yun regrets that he can't be there for her. But behind his sadness, lies a fire of rage. He decides to take the path of revenge. He goes to his superior to take a leave of absence from work. One of his subordinates sneaks out a special tool for him, a capsule tracker equipped with GPS and a microphone. Yo Yun's father gives him the investigation file that the police have so far on the case. They have four main suspects. This time, he will take matters into his own hands. He tracks the first suspect and meets him in his apartment. He beats him to get a confession. He confesses to killing another person, but he is not the one Su Yun is looking for. After handing him over to the police, he goes to the second suspect. Unfortunately, that person is not the one he is looking for too. He then goes back home, but he feels so frustrated that he can't even get some rest. He decides to do more investigation to track the third suspect. Meanwhile, the serial killer is on the hunt again. He kidnaps another woman and kills her. Su Yun goes to the third suspect's family to get more clues. Even his family doesn't know his whereabouts. He abandoned his parents and left his son with them. After talking to the son, he finally discovers the location of the third suspect's hideout. He searches the house and finds a bunch of women's bags, undies, shoes, and other accessories inside a locked cabinet. He also discovers a room with bloodstains on the floor. After further inspection, he manages to find Yo Yun's engagement ring inside the drainage. At that moment he realizes that he found the killer. The killer's name is Kyung Chol, a driver at a learning center. The police also find out about his identity and immediately rush there. But it's too late, he is already on the way to delivering the students home. The learning center tries to contact him, but he ignores it. At that moment he realizes that the police already know his identity, so he decides to have some fun with one of the schoolgirls. He brings her home and sexually assaults her. Just before he is about to devour her, he hears someone calling his name. He goes to check it out and finds a person coming alone. It is Su Yun, he manages to track him down. Kyung Chul thinks that he is a policeman and underestimates him because he comes unarmed alone. But unknown to him, he is no match for Su Yun, a secret agent. Su Yun easily takes him down and strangles him until he is unconscious. Su Hyun plans to do much more than simply kill this psychopath. He nearly beats him to death, before relenting and shoving a GPS tracker down his throat, allowing him to see Kyung Chul's location in real time and listen to his conversations. After Kyung Chul regains consciousness, he finds an envelope full of cash. At first, Kyung Chul remains oblivious that Su Hyun does not want him dead, but instead to suffer as much as humanly possible. He then goes for a walk and meets a taxi driver that offers him a ride. There is already a passenger inside. Upon getting in, and correctly guesses that the driver and passenger are two bandits intending to rob and murder him, he strikes out preemptively and kills them both. Afterward, he finds the body of the real taxi driver in the trunk. Kyung Chul throws out all three bodies. He then drives to a nearby town to treat his injuries at a clinic. Feeling sexually frustrated because he fails to devour his last victim, he sexually assaults a nurse there. 
Su Yun once again intervenes and tortures Kyung Chol, slicing his Achilles tendon. Despite the warnings and pleas of his murdered fiancé's sister and father to stop what he's doing, Su Yun continues his bloody quest for vengeance. Once again, Kyung Chol regains consciousness and finds himself stranded in the middle of nowhere but still alive. Kyung Chol visits the home of his friend, Taeyo, who is a murderer and cannibal. After explaining his situation to Taeyo, Kyung Chol consequently deduces Su Yun's identity after recalling Yo Yun's engagement ring, which Su Yun had put on before attacking him previously. He plans to stay there for a while but Su Yun is already on the move. Just before Tae Yo is about to slaughter his victim to restock his human flesh supply, Su Yun comes and incapacitates Tae Yo along with his girlfriend, and beats Kyung Chol senselessly. The next day, Tae Yo and his girlfriend are arrested by the police and sent to the hospital. The police start to realize that Su Yun has gone rogue. Instead of bringing the suspect to the police, he toys with him. Su Yun's trusted subordinate arranges for Su Yun and Kyung Chul to evade the police and receive treatment for their wounds at a separate facility. The barely conscious Kyung Chul hears Su Yun and the subordinate talking about the transmitter. Su Yun releases Kyung Chul again, but this time he begins to catch on to Su Yun's MO. He goes to a nearby pharmacy and slashes the throat of a pharmacist while stealing laxatives which he plans to use to remove the transmitter. While doing this, he talks to Su Yun via the transmitter and promises him that he will show him the real pain. Su Yun rushes to the pharmacy location but he is already too late. The transmitter is still online and shows Kyung Chul location. But it turns out that Kyung Chul already uses the laxatives to remove the transmitter then plants it on a driver at a truck stop that he viciously beats. Now, he can't track him anymore. Kyung Chul contacts the police, telling them that he plans on turning himself in, so Su Yun will be unable to touch him, but not before he finishes some business. Feeling lost, So Yun enters Tae Yo's hospital room to question him and learns too late that Kyung Chul is going after Yo Yun's father. Angered, he breaks Tae Yo's jaw. Before Kim Su Yun is able to catch on to Kyung Chul's plan and warn him, Kyung Chul manages to get to him first and brutally attacks him with a dumbbell. Yo Yun's sister arrives at the house, not aware of the situation. He then sexually assaults her and leaves her for dead on the street. Shortly after, Kyung Chul attempts to avoid Su Yun's revenge by surrendering to the police. However, Su Yun drives by and wheels off with Kyung Chul right in front of the police's eyes. Kyung Chul awakens to find himself tied up inside his home. After being tortured and stabbed, Kyung Chul still appears empowered, telling Su Hyun that he's lost. He can't feel any pain, no fear, nothing. Su Yun places him under the makeshift guillotine. Su Hyun leaves Kyung Chul, who now has a rope tied from his mouth to the door, holding the guillotine from beheading him. While Su Hyun leaves, an older man and woman, and a small child exit a taxi and approach the hideout. Though he mocks Su Yun, Kyung Chul begins to panic when he learns that his son and elderly parents, whom he had abandoned some time ago, have arrived and are trying to visit him. As his family opens the door, the guillotine is dropped and Kyung Chul's head rolls to their feet. With Kyung Chul finally dead, Su Yun, who was listening through the transmitter some distance away, emotionally breaks down and begins crying in the street as he slowly walks away. He has fulfilled his promise to his fiance and completed his bloody quest for vengeance. But is it all worth the price he paid? Subscribe to watch more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like and comment to help the channel out. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.